In 1994, a 12-year-old girl committed a crime so gruesome that those in the area described it as being Jack the Ripper style. And for two years, detectives were searching for a man rather than a little girl due to how brutal the crime was. It's strange enough when children become murderers, but in this case, 12-year-old Sharon Carr chose her victim at random and her victim wasn't a child smaller than her. Sharon chose at random and tortured them before viciously stabbing them. This is the disturbing case of Sharon Louise Carr. Sharon Louise Carr was born in 1981 in the Caribbean country of Belize. She was raised by her mother and stepfather and shared their home with three other siblings. The family lived in great poverty, even after they moved to England in 1986. There, they found a modest home in Camberley, Surrey. Her mother and stepfather divorced shortly after the move due to some serious domestic violence issues. It was reported that Sharon's mother poured boiling fat over her spouse. Sharon's teachers in school initially thought of Sharon as well-mannered, helpful and sociable, but her behavior quickly spiraled. Sharon became destructive and attention-seeking. She'd often act out in fits of aggression and even had problems with the local authorities. In 1990, a teacher at her school contacted social services about her troubling behavior and Sharon was placed into foster care but reunited with her mother just a month later. Sharon began smoking weed and earned a reputation for violence and intimidation. It was also reported that Sharon would practice voodoo by torturing and killing animals. One neighbor stated that Sharon decapitated their dog with a spade. Another local in the area said Sharon fried live hamsters. Even as horrifying as this was, Sharon wanted to commit the ultimate crime. On June the 7th, 1992, 18-year-old Katie Radcliffe was walking home in the early morning hours from a nightclub in Camberley. 12-year-old Sharon Carr approached Katie and attacked her as she tried getting into her car. Katie was a complete stranger to Sharon, and yet she stabbed her 32 times with a 6-inch kitchen knife. Katie was stabbed through the ribs, straight into her heart, and her sexual organs were mutilated. Additionally, when she was found, her clothes had been pulled off. Sharon then stole some of Katie's jewellery and moved her body to Farnborough, where she dragged Katie along the road and dumped her body by a cemetery wall. Later, Sharon confessed that two boys had helped in the attack and were the ones to move the body. However, after she named them and they were interrogated, they were eliminated from the investigation and the prosecutor had a difficult time explaining how a 120 pound 12 year old child could have dragged a woman's lifeless body a considerable distance. After Katie's body was found the following day by a group of boys, the police never questioned whether or not an adult male had committed the murder. The extent of the injuries were barbaric and Katie's sexual organs were destroyed. And after the autopsy was performed, the pathologist suggested that Katie was still alive during the infliction of the genital injuries, making this case seem as if someone with great power had committed the torturous crime. No one would have guessed their suspect was a little girl. After Sharon committed the murder, she returned home and boasted about it in her journal. She filled the pages with violent imagery and the desire to kill as she bragged about getting away with it. I am a killer, killing is my business and business is good, she wrote. But as the pages went on, they became more frightening as she spoke about her desire to kill again. Two years after Sharon had gotten away with the murder of Katie Ratcliffe, Sharon attacked again on June the 7th, 1994. Sharon stabbed a fellow 13-year-old schoolmate, Anna Marie Clifford, in the lungs with a four-inch kitchen knife in a school bathroom. Thankfully, the young girl survived after a group of girls witnessed Sharon in the act as they entered the bathroom. They reported that Sharon was smiling and appeared happy during the attack. The police had yet to discover Sharon was the suspect they were searching for in Katie's murder, so they only charged her with the attack on the schoolgirl. She was sentenced to two years in a young offenders institution in Bullwood Hall. There, she bragged to fellow inmates about being the murderer behind Katie's death two years before. After hearing of this, the police searched Sharon's home. There, they found her diaries of writing 
and illustrations describing her sexual excitement at the thought of Katie's death. In these inquiries, she also remarked about the devil and how he motivated her. Criminologist Dr. Elizabeth Yardley later said about the journals, The diaries are a way of relieving the murders. It's a way of commemorating them, being able to go back and revisit that moment where she felt all-powerful, so she's preserving that moment. She doesn't want to forget it. After detectives questioned her about this, she confessed to the murder, which completely surprised them. She was also able to tell them information that the killer would only know, like how Katie's bracelet had been stolen. And during the questioning, she repeatedly laughed about the details. Sharon was convicted of the murder and received a minimum tariff of 14 years imprisonment. Sharon smiled after the sentencing while she was being escorted from the courtroom. Sharon was branded the devil's daughter in the press and they highlighted her obsession with death and violence. During her time in prison, Sharon assaulted other inmates and admitted several times to having the desire to kill again. She continued to act out violently throughout the years and, as of March 2020, she is still imprisoned, despite the expiration of her minimum tariff. Sharon's case is particularly unusual. It's strange enough when children murder, but for a child to murder a random adult, it's almost unheard of. And for the murder to be performed in such a disturbing and gruesome way.